Hey friends, Jerry Robinson here from TrueRichesRadio.com. Back again with another question for Jehovah's Witnesses. These are questions that we are sharing with you that you can use as a Christian to share with Jehovah's Witnesses when they come to your door or whenever they call you or send you a letter. These are questions designed to get Jehovah's Witnesses to think about their own faith tradition and to see uh, that there are some discrepancies in some of the things that they believe and some of the things that the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society have uh, promoted over the years. And what I've done today is I have, again, uh, the jw.org website open, and here you can come in and view their Bible. Uh, We're going to look at the book of Luke today, chapter 1, just a little section of it. And the question today that we're going to ask the Jehovah's Witness is, Who is Elizabeth's Lord? And you're going to understand what this question is all about here in just a minute. But what you'll want to do is, as I've stated before, when you talk to Jehovah's Witnesses, it's really better for you to use their Bible, even though their Bible has a lot of incorrect type of translations in it. By the way, every translation is an act of interpretation, no matter what translation it is. But in this case, the New World Translation that the Jehovah's Witnesses use and promote has many discrepancies in it based upon the original Greek and Hebrew. But that's not really the point. The point is is that you want to use their Bible because otherwise they tend to shut down. Now, they will say, Jehovah's Witnesses will say, oh, we like the King James Bible and we we use these other Bibles. But don't, don't pay attention to that. Use their Bible because their Bible they believe to be true. And if you try to show them something from your Bible, it won't have the same effect. If you try to show them something from the King James or the New International Version, they'll just say those versions have been... Uh, corrupted, and we have the pure version. So just save yourself the time and the effort and just focus on using their Bible when you are showing them things. You don't have to go out and get a Jehovah's Witness Bible. Just They'll have one and ask them to read these verses. Uh, And what you'll do is you'll come to Luke chapter 1 for this question. Very powerful question. I've used this a few times with Jehovah's Witnesses. I have never gotten an answer. I've gotten, we'll come back to that or I'll get you know, Elder Bob to come back and maybe answer that question, but never have I received an actual answer from Jehovah's Witnesses uh, on this question. So what we do is we go to Luke chapter 1. All of this passage here is a description of the birth of John the Baptist and the birth of Jesus and the events that lead up to it. Uh, Obviously, as you go through Luke chapter 1, you begin to see uh, Zechariah, Uh, And then you also see Elizabeth, who is pregnant. Elizabeth is the mother of John the Baptist, and she is going to encounter Mary, the mother of Jesus, because Mary, after she receives this angelic visitation from the angel, then it tells us that she is going to go out into the hill country into a city of Judah. Let's start in verse 39, and here's where you'll pick up with the uh, Jehovah's Witness when you're speaking to them. Begin in verse 39, and we'll go down to about 43. Let's read together. It says, So Mary set out in those days and traveled with haste into the mountainous country to a city of Judah. So this is Mary, pregnant with Jesus in her womb, going to the hill country. And it says, And she entered the home of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Okay, so now remember, Elizabeth is what? She's pregnant with John the Baptist, and Mary is pregnant with Jesus. Now notice what happens here in verse 41 from their own Bible. Well, as Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the infant in her womb leaped. And notice what it says. And Elizabeth was filled with Holy Spirit and loudly cried out, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruitage of your womb. So how is it that this privilege is mine to have the mother of my Lord come to me? Okay, so let's kind of unpack what's happened here. We could continue to go on uh, and read, but I want you to see what is being said here. Uh, Even though when you're reading through this passage, it may not seem like the passage that you might read in the King James or New King James. It's very important to see that what's being said in the Jehovah's Witness Bible here is still going to be instrumental for you as you're talking to them. 
Notice what it says there in verse 41. Uh, when Mary comes to visit Elizabeth and Mary comes in and greets Elizabeth, when Elizabeth hears the greeting, the infant, John the Baptist, in, in her womb leaps, and then she is filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now she is under the power of the Holy Spirit, and then she makes an exclamation. She loudly cries out something, and she says, Blessed are you among women, blessed is the fruit of your womb, and then why do I have this privilege to have the mother of my Lord come to me? Now, here's where you form the question when you're talking to the Jehovah's Witness. Notice that Elizabeth is calling the baby in the womb of Mary, who's standing in front of her, she calls that baby in the womb her Lord. And I want you to see in the New World tran Translation here, it is not a little L. It is not saying that he's someone who's mighty and he's a special person and he's a special human. She is using the word Lord, capital L, even in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Now, I want you to remember that all of this is happening before Jesus is even born, before Jesus' ministry begins, before he uh, lives his life, does his ministry, uh, heralds the good news, uh, offers salvation, uh, is crucified, buried, resurrected, ascends back to heaven. Before all of these things happen, we're still in a place where Jesus has not yet been born. Right? So this is the very, very, very first chapter of Luke, just as the account is beginning to unfold of Jesus' life. And here, underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth cries out and calls the baby in the womb of Mary her Lord, capital L. Now the question you're really posing here is, you can ask the Jehovah's Witness, who do Jews call their Lord? In other words, is there one Lord or two Lords to Jews? And some people that I've talked to in the past with Jehovah's Witnesses, sometimes they'll say, well, you know, Lord is like an official word, and that's the word that we use whenever we're talking to somebody who is higher than us. It's just a title of respect. Um, that would probably work if we weren't talking about a Jew filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. This is a Jew who is filled with the Holy Spirit. How many lords does a Jew have? Right. Uh, the Jews do not have many lords. Right. They have one lord. Here, Israel, our God is one. Right. We have one lord. And so in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Scriptures, we see the word lord applied to who? Applied to God. The Jehovah's Witnesses would say, that's Yahweh, or that's Jehovah. So here we see Elizabeth saying, you are the mother of my Lord. Who is speaking? Elizabeth. Who is she? A Jew. What has happened to her? She has been filled with the Holy Spirit. Now she is saying, Mary, you are the mother of my Lord. My capital L, Lord. So the question to the Jehovah's Witnesses is, is who is Elizabeth's Lord. And notice what it also says. There's also a portion that's very, very important that we did not speak about. When we come back up to verse uh, 5 and 6, uh, I want you to see what it says here. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. His wife was from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Notice what verse 6 says. They were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in accord with all the commandments and legal requirements of Jehovah. So in essence, what's happening here is you have a righteous woman named Elizabeth who is walking blamelessly in accord with all the commandments and legal requirements of the law, right? So when we come back down here to where we were around verse 43, what we're seeing here is that this righteous and blameless woman has been filled with the Holy Spirit, and she says that the baby in the womb is her Lord. Jehovah's Witness, who is Mary's Lord? Is it a man? Underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, has she called a creature her Lord? Or underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, has this righteous woman 
who is blameless according to the law, according to Luke 1, verse 6, is she stating underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that the one in the womb of Mary is really her Lord, capital L. This is a great question to ask the Jehovah's Witnesses. Who is Elizabeth's Lord? Is it a creature? Has this Jew who is blameless in the law suddenly just lapsed underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit into creature worship? Is she calling the person in Mary's womb uh, who Jehovah's Witnesses will say a creature? Is she calling that person Lord underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and blameless and righteous? Would she do that? So when we see who Elizabeth's Lord is, we see that it is Jesus. Jesus is a creature and he is the son of Jehovah and he is not Almighty God. Why would she call him her Lord if he wasn't really the Lord with a capital L? Great question for Jehovah's Witnesses. I hope this helps. Dig down deep and don't let them skirt around this. Spend time here. Ask them, what did Elizabeth make a mistake? Did she not understand what was happening? Was she confused? Right. Force them to answer this question. Who is Elizabeth's Lord? And if Elizabeth's Lord, capital L, is a creature, you know, someone who is not God, which the witnesses claim that Jesus is not God, then there's a real major problem here because Elizabeth is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. She's righteous. I think she knows what she's talking about underneath the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Why do Jehovah's Witnesses try to act as if she is not saying what she's saying? Why do they ignore it? Drill down deep with the Jehovah's Witness. Ask them this question. Who is Elizabeth Lord? Very, very powerful. I hope this helps. We'll be back with another video for you with another question that you can ask Jehovah's Witnesses at the door. We really want to reach Jehovah's Witnesses. And these questions can help you create conversations with them in dialogue that can really go a long way in helping them see the truth about Christ. I hope this helps. And again, we'll see you next time. God bless.